Today I'm making an Easter classic, hot cross buns. And here are the ingredients that we need. One cup of milk, a half a cup of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of instant dried yeast, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. We'll also need a quarter cup of butter, which I'm going to melt. We're going to need two eggs, a half a cup of raisins, and also a half a cup of mixed candied peel. This is the same kind of stuff that you use in fruitcake. So these are the ingredients, so let's get started. Alrighty, so I have my warm milk that I just heated in the microwave and I'm going to pour that into my KitchenAid mixing bowl. And I've also got my sugar, which I'm going to dump in there as well. Stir that around a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of my flour, which is over here. And I'm just going to dump that in. And give that a stir. And I'm going to pour my yeast in now. There we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat up my butter. I want to melt the butter, but I don't want to really have it boiling hot. So I'm going to heat that on a low heat, and I'll be back. Alrighty, I've melted my butter. We'll just pour that in. It's not 100% melted, but it doesn't matter. There we go. That's just going to make it easier to incorporate. Get that nicely mixed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack both of my eggs here and I'll get those eggs in as well. There's number one. Now you're probably wondering, well, why am I not doing this, you know, the whole thing in my KitchenAid mixer, which is sitting right here. Uh, I just thought I'd mix it up a little bit and change up the video a little bit. You could do this whole thing right with the mixer, right from the get-go. But today I just feel like doing it like this. It's kind of fun. Now you get to see a little bit more. You know, a little bit of a different technique. That is a really, really rich mixture here. There we go. All right. So at this point, I am going to actually start working with the KitchenAid mixer. So I'm going to get this set up and I'll be back. All right. So I've got my KitchenAid mixer all set up here with the dough hook. I'm going to get some more flour in here. At this point, I'm going to just dump it all in because it's not much there. And we'll start mixing this and uh, we'll let that go for a little bit. All right, our dough's been going for about two minutes. What I love about the KitchenAid machine is that you can multitask. While I was letting this go, I was washing a few of my dishes, so that's what that's a, another great excuse to buy yourself a mixer. Anyway, so you can really see that this dough is coming together, and at this point now, I'm going to start adding in all the rest of the ingredients. So I've got the cinnamon and all of the other spices. So let's pop those in. There we go. And then our raisins, I'm going to show you them here. Let's get all those in. So that's that. And our candied peel. So let's get all of that in. And there we go. And we'll get our machine going. 
and we'll let that go. We want to get this really well incorporated now. All right, my dough's been going now for a good four to five minutes, and it's very wet still. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be bringing out on. I'm going to be bringing it out onto my work area, and I'm just going to use a little bit more flour, and I'm going to knead it by hand, and then we're going to let it rise. So I'll, I'll bring that out now. So I guess I'll just speed up the video a little bit here so you can just see me doing this quickly so you don't have to watch me doing it for two or three minutes. All right, so I've placed flour on the bottom and I'm gonna get some flour on the top and we're just gonna get this dough a little bit more tight meaning a little bit more firm. So I'm just going to mix it around, knead it a little bit. And we don't want to incorporate too much flour because we want to have a nice, you know, moist, fluffy end product. That's pretty good, just like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a bowl and I'm gonna spray some cooking spray into it. So let's grab my bowl. So I've got my bowl here. I'm just gonna take some cooking spray. I'm just gonna spray it off camera over there. So I'll spray this and I'll be back. Alrighty, there we go. So now I'm gonna take our dough and just pop it in there and I'm going to spray the top as well. So I'll just go over here to spray. That's just going to keep our dough nice and moist. Alright, so at this point here, I'm just going to cover this dough now. And I'm going to let it rise for maybe about half hour, 40 minutes. Alright, so we'll let that go and I'll be back. Alright, so our dough's been going for about 45 minutes right now and I'm going to pop it out here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into you could go eight if you want maybe I'm gonna go eight today and make them a little larger All right, I've got all these pretty well even. So how many we've got here? Two, four, six, we've got eight, so perfect. If you wanna make more of them, you can make them smaller, but I like them like this. So I'm gonna get them into little round circles like that. That's good. Just pull them all, make little circles. And I'll continue on doing this and we'll be back. You can smell all those spices. They really, really smell nice. You know, if you don't like all of these spices that I put in, you don't need to. But you, you, want, you do want to put a little bit of cinnamon in there. Alright, so here we go. But this is, this is a traditional hot cross bun. Now, I've got my pan here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take some cooking spray and I'm just going to spray this. All right. And I'm going to get those on top of there. All right. And now I'm going to take it over here and I'm just going to spray the top of them. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to let these rise. And I could take a towel and put the towel over them, but what's going to happen is they're going to stick to, to the towel eventually. So I'm just going to keep an eye on how they're doing. I'm going to put these on top of the stove. And what I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on them, make sure that they're not drying out. And if you do see that they're starting to dry out, what you can do is just take your spray and just do a, just a quick spritz over the top of them so that they're, they're still moist. Because what happens is if, the, if a crust forms on the top of the dough balls, it inhibits them from rising. So anyway, 
that's it for, for right now. So I'm just going to put them over on the stove and I'm going to let them rise for a little while. And so we'll be back in a bit. Alright, so our hot cross buns have been rising now for about 45 minutes and I'm going to pop them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are going to go until they're golden brown, about 15 minutes. Alright, it's been exactly 15 minutes, so let's get these out of here. Ooh, that's hot. Oh, they look good. I'll get them up there and let's take a little look at them. Alright, these just came out of the oven and they look really good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a very simple glaze for the hot cross buns and we will make that next and then we're going to brush the glaze all over them. Alright, the next step is to get our stove element going. I've got two tablespoons of just regular white sugar. I'm going to pop that in there and I have two tablespoons of water and I'm going to get that in there as well. And what we want to do is we want to get this up to a boil and then we're going to remove it from the heat. This is going to make a really nice glaze to put over our hot cross buns and it's going to make them look really really good. So that's our next step. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get this going. I'll get this boiling and we'll be back. Alright this is about oh maybe a minute later not even. I've got it on a medium heat and I don't want to caramelize this sugar but I do want to get it up to a nice boil before we remove it from the heat. I don't have much in there but we don't need much. You know if you were making a double recipe of these hot cross buns you'd want more but we have plenty here. Alright my heat's off now but my element is still hot. You can still see there's a little bit of bubbling going on. But the sugar water mixture has really started to thicken up. So it looks good at that point. So what I'm going to do is just let it sit here for a minute and then we will put it onto our hot cross buns. Alright, so about a minute later you can see this stuff is still very hot. I've got my little silicone brush and I'm just going to quickly brush over the buns like this. So you can just do this. You don't have to get all over the whole bun. You can just do the top. I guess if you wanted to do every bun on every single part of the the surface of, of it, I guess you would um, you know you'd make a little bit more syrup, but uh, we're good here. If you wanted to make more syrup to cover the entire bun, just double this recipe, but I don't, uh, I don't think you'll need to do that. You can see that it's giving a nice gloss. Do I have all of them in view here? Good. That's good. So let's just keep going. And you can see this, you know, some of the sugar is going down. So it's good to just do these on the tray, you know, on your baking sheet that you actually bake them on. And you can see how nicely these have risen. These are going to be really, really good. So this is basically step two. Now you don't have to do this step. You could just jump over and make up another simple syrup that we're going to make the cross with. So there are two different methods of making the cross so that it's a hot cross bun. You can either, before you bake them, you can make a mixture of flour and water, it's a thick paste, and you can make your cross. And then what you do at that point, you bake them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a simple sugar solution and then we're just going to make a little cross afterwards, which many bakeries do as well. Some bakeries will do it with the flour water mixture, some bakeries do it with the sugar. But anyway, so we'll just let those cool now and I'll be back with the final step where we're going to create the little cross a little later on once these have cooled down. Alright, I'm going to make a really simple icing for the top of our hot cross buns. This is just to make the cross. So you're going to need half a cup of icing sugar, which is confectioner sugar. I'm using this here. Alright, 
and one tablespoon of water. And we're going to mix that in and we'll see how thick it is or how thin it is and we'll just adjust it from that but we'll start mixing this up and we'll see how good our consistency is. I want it thicker. If you want it to be thinner you could add a little bit more water but I like it a little thicker because it creates a better defined line on, on the top of the uh, hot cross bun. So we'll mix that up and um, we're going to put this on the buns later on when they're cooled because they're still pretty warm. So we'll just mix this around. Let me just zoom in here a little bit so you can actually see something. There we go. There, you see how nice and thick that is? Now if you put this on to the buns right now, it would just melt and just slide all over the place and we don't want that. There, that's nice, just like that. All right, so all of the hot cross buns are cooled now. And here's our stuff that we made before. So this is the confectioner sugar and a little bit of water. So now you got a couple of choices. You can just take the stuff, the icing, and just make your cross like that. Or what we can do is we can put it into a little baggie and then close the baggie up and then cut a little hole at the bottom and we can do it that way. Which I think will be more fun. So maybe we should do it that way. What do you think? So I could do, you know, I could do one like this. So let's try it. Just I'll just do one like this. So you go like that. Get enough on there. And then along this way. And there we go. Look at that. You don't even need the bag really. What do you want? You think I should do the bag? Okay, I'll try one with the bag. So I'll hang on. I'll, I'll go set up the bag and I'll be back in a second. So we'll just dump it into the bag. Works a little better if you have somebody helping you do this. Alrighty, that's good enough. Okay. We'll close the bag up. There we go. And I'll go get a pair of scissors and we'll cut a little hole right here in the corner. If you don't have piping bags, this is a very good idea. And it's very inexpensive as well. So let's just make a very small hole. And I'm just going to squeeze the bag so we get to the corner. And then I'm going to start there. Like that. And then another little cross here. Look at that. Does that look great? There we go. So I'll continue on and I'll be back when they're all done. And there we go. So there's our final product, our homemade hot cross buns. Yum, yum, yum. So that's it for this video. So I'll see you next time. And go. Oh, these buns look really good. These look really good. Anyway, here we go. I didn't realize I was still taping. Look at the nice rise I got in right, right there. You see that? How it blew up there? Nice. And we'll just tear it apart like this. And I'll just show you what it looks like in the in, on the inside. Look at that.
Oh man. And that smells so good. And very, very nice and moist on the inside. Here's a great way to use one of your hot cross buns. Cut it up and let's go pop it in the toaster. All right, let's pop our hot cross bun in there and get that down. Oh, that's going to be good. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Woo, hot. Nice and golden brown, so let's go take those over and butter them up. This is the way that I like to eat hot cross buns. And there we go. Oh boy, that looks good. Mm-mm. Very, very good.